Hey there! In this video, we're going to take a look at how to write a container with IO Fabric using Java. Note that you can also write a container using the Python or the Node.js SDKs, uh, and we'll take a look at those in a later video. So, the first step is to download Eclipse um, so you can code in uh, Java, and we're just going to go ahead and open it right up and get started. Great, so this is a container that I wrote, um, and what it does is it's basically a simulator for a highway speed tracker. Um, so we're going to take a look at this in a moment. The first step is to uh, actually download the SDK jar file from, um, from GitHub. So we're going to go to GitHub. So you can just search up GitHub IO tracks. And go to the main folder. And it's going to be the container SDK Java. Now you're going to want to pull up this jar file and save it somewhere on your machine where you can access it because you're going to need it um, in the build path of your Java project. Cool, so we're going to just X out of this. Okay, so first, the first step is to create a new project in Eclipse, which you can do by going to File, New, Java Project. Uh, sorry. New Java Project, and then you click on it, and name it whatever you want it to be. I just named mine Container for simplicity. Um, and then once you have the project, you want to cl click on it so it's highlighted. Go to Project, Properties, Java Build Path, and then you want to add external jars. Now if you notice here, I, I have the container Java SDK, and I've already added it. So once you add it, you can see that it'll be right here. And you want to hit Apply, and then OK. Okay, so within this project, let's take a look at the source and the default package. So note that I have two different methods within this project, or rather two different classes within this project. We're going to take a look at the speed tracker.java second, um, just because it has the bulk of the code and it's it's the main code. We're going to look at the um, the auxiliary uh, class first, which is this IOF listener. Uh, you can really name this whatever you want, but what's important is that it implements IO Fabric API Listener. And this is an interface specified in the um, Java IO Fabric SDK. And well, basically, it's going to look something like this. So when you have this, um, when you type this implements IO Fabric API Listener, you're initially going to get an error. So let me just show you by commenting out one of the methods and now you're going to get an error and it's going to say uh, add unimplemented methods if you hover over it um, so what you need to do is you need to click on that and then it will basically write all of this all of these uh, function definitions for you and you can just basically return nothing in all of them um, the one exception is for on bad request and on error, it's probably useful for you to print out what the error message actually is because it might be useful. Um, also, uh, on this on new config method, um, what you can do is you can 
uh, use this JSON object config and you can see if it contains a certain key uh, you can set certain fields in your container to match uh, the config setting and in this way you can actually sort of fine-tune and control uh, your container to make it more configurable. But other than that what you need to have is this uh, this field um, for a for in, in this instance the speed tracker uh, and you want to basically initialize it so you can um, you know do things with it like here you can modify its fields for instance all right so this is the IOF listener um, you know the import statements will be taken care of uh, you know when you write this implements um, it'll be taken care of automatically so the main code is in the speed tracker um, and just to give you a, a brief idea, I have this method called speed, which basically says that um, with some random probability, you know, in this case it's 0.4 or 40%, there's going to be no car, so the speed is zero. Um, other than that, what you have is this delta value, and um, basically this is how you differ from the speed limit. So with the probability 0.4 at uh, each of these 20 intervals, you're going to reduce your speed by 1, and with probability 0.6, you're going to increase speed by 1. So it's slightly more likely that you speed up, um, and the limit uh, is defaulted to here, it's going to be uh, 70. But uh, you can config uh, configure the speed limit to be whatever you want it to be, and um, at the end you're going to return your speed limit. So this is sort of like a simulator for a highway uh, speed tracker. Okay, so there's basically three main parts to the actual um, you know, talking to the IO fabric. Uh, and the first, th first step is to connect to the IO fabric. And so we have this connect method in which um, you instantiate a new listener of course you can't instantiate an interface, so this is why you need um, your own uh, class that implements the interface of the IO Fabric API listener. Um, and then you want this IO Fabric host, uh, this IO Fabric port, and a container ID. So the container ID is passed um, not by, uh, it is going to be passed via um, an argument in the docker run command. So it's going to be like this, self name equals, uh, equals some number or some container ID. Uh, and this is how you can get the container ID. Um, other than that, you have the um, instantiating of the client, which is an IO Fabric client. Uh, and you're going to have to import the IO Fabric client from the um, SDK. Okay, and it takes three arguments, which are your IO Fabric host string, uh, your IO Fabric port number, which should be something greater than 5,000, um, or sorry, 50,000, and your container ID, which is uh, what happens after you build your container in Docker. Okay, cool. So we've connected to the IO Fabric client, and this is basically all purpose code. It's going to be the same for you, basically, as it is for me. Um, and then for post, or rather, we need to init second, um, and so we have this method called init, in which we uh, create what's called an IO message, which is what is sent to the IO Fabric client, and you basically, you don't need to really instantiate all of these fields, I just did it for completeness, um, but the real, uh, the real crux of it is this content data, um, this field called content data, which is not in the init, because it's going to be updated every time you're posting um, because you're going to have a different speed at every time, right? So um, you can just instantiate whatever fields you feel are necessary um, and that's that. So lastly we have this method called um, post and what it's going to do is it's going to um, in our case set the config values to whatever they have to be um, and note that you can uh, update this via this method over here called onNewConfig. 
So going back to our post, we um, initialize the frequency and the speed limit, um, and then every, you know, some number of seconds given by the frequency, we update the speed, and we set the content data and the set context data of the uh, I.O. message to whatever our speed is. What's important to note is that you can't just pass it an integer, but you need to make the content data um, like a array of bytes before you can push the message. So there's this useful me method called two bytes. Um, you can find this online at the tutorial uh, code snippet of it, but you can also just see it right here. Um, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to convert an integer to a, a, a four uh, element array of bytes. And um, other than that, that's basically it. So again, three main steps. You got to uh, connect to the IO Fabric client. You have to in initiate your IO message and then uh, you post whatever information you want to. Um, and so that's all the code there is to writing a container with IO Fabric. Other than that, um, we can just X out of Eclipse now because we're actually done with it. Cool, so now we're going to go into Terminal and this is the dockerizing of the project. So, actually before we do this, we need one more final step in Eclipse. So we're gonna go open it right back up. Um, With Docker, you can't just use a simple Java file. You need to actually uh, export it as a runnable jar file. Um, and then we can go ahead and look at the Docker component um, of the project. Great, so we just open up our project again and give it a second. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to go into uh, File, Export, Java, and then you want to select Runnable Jar File. And so if you go to Next, uh, you can choose your export destination, which should be in the same folder. Um, and that's pretty convenient in my opinion. Um, and then you can just leave the rest as is. So you export it as a runnable jar file, and then you can exit from Eclipse. Okay, so we open up Terminal, and then just to see where we are, you can use the ls command, or rather to see what's in our current directory. So we're in the root, and we can go into workspace, because that's where all our Eclipse files are. And then if we ls again, we have a folder called container. And then let's just see what's in container. Cool, so we have bin, source, and you won't have these yet because we're about to write them right now, but you will have the speedtracker.jar, which is the file that you just created by exporting as a runnable jar file. So let's clear for a second, and then you're gonna type in this command, sudo gedit docker file, and what this is gonna do is it's gonna open a text editor um, called gedit, where you can modify what's um, this file called Dockerfile, and if it's not yet created, it will be created with this command. So we're going to t type it in, and it's going to ask you for permissions if you're not uh, logged in as root. Cool, so now you have your Dockerfile open, and you're going to basically want to write code that looks exactly like this. So it's going to have an import statement with uh, Java version 8, and then you're going to um, you know, run some uh, make directory um, commands, and then you're going to copy a file and then um, go into that folder. So now we can actually access that jar file, and this is the part that you're going to have to change. So it's going to be uh, whatever your jar file is named is going to go right here. But other than that, everything should be the same. Cool, so you're going to want to save it first before you close it. Um, I already saved it, so I'm not going to do it. Um, and cool, so now if you type in ls, you should see a docker file. You won't see this yet because this will only happen once you run the docker build command. Great, which we're going to do now actually. So you want to type in sudo docker build dash t 
and then io track slash catalog and then your unique container name so for me it's going to be speed tracker um, because that's what my container is going to be called and so if you type in this command um, it will build and um, then you will be able to see this docker file slash um, file when you ls but I've already done it, so I don't want to do it a second time and you know create a second file or something. So let's just clear. And now you have run the docker build command, but you still need to push it to the um, IO fabric repository, or the, rather the IO tracks repository. So what you want to do is you want to, um, if you haven't already, create a docker hub account so you have access to push to the IO tracks repository. So you just search up Docker Hub, or it's hub.docker.com, and you sign up for an account. And once you sign up for an account, you request access to the IO tracks developer program by emailing IO tracks. And the specific email is available on the online tutorial for um, building a Java container. And so you want to request access, and once you get access, you're going to be able to go back into terminal, and it will allow you to type in this command of sudo docker push iotrack slash catalog, and then your unique container ID, so container name rather. So it'll be like this, and then once you push, it'll say successfully pushed, um, and then you're ready to go. So once you have that done, you've already pushed to the uh, Docker Hub repository, and the final step of the process uh, in building a container with IO Fabric from IO Tracks using Java is to go ahead and publish it online. So, what you're going to do is uh, open up your web browser, and then you want to go to iotracks.com/authoring/publish. And once you go to this site, it's going to ask you to log in. So if you haven't yet created an account, uh, you want to. And then you can log in. Cool. So you want to go to the Publish tab. And cool. So this is what it should look like. It's not authoring slash publishing. It's authoring slash publish. You can um, you can uh, let's see hold on so you want to create a new instance and uh, within that instance you can create a stream and within that stream you can create an element um, just going back to publishing because computers are acting a little funny. Great, so you go back to publishing, and um, I was wrong, it is publishing, not publish, uh, and you want to publish a new element, so you name it, you give it a description, a category, for mine it would be sensors, um, because it's a simulator of a sensor, and then publisher, whatever company you work for, or your name if you're an individual um, experimenter, and then whatever your container image. So I would be iotrack slash catalog uh, colon speed tracker. And then once you do that, you can actually see it in the IO authoring um, folder as one of the published containers. And um, that's basically all there is to the process of writing a container in Java. So um, in a previous video, we took a look at setting up uh, Java, Docker, and IO Fabric on a virtual machine, and in this video we've taken a look at how to uh, write the actual Java code and um, write the Docker file as well as uh, export as a jar file, and then finally to publish um, after pushing to the uh, Docker Hub repository. So um, there's a lot of different steps that go into building a um, container with IO Fabric but it's really not that bad. Um, so I hope you got something out of this video, and um, 
that's all there is to it.